you know, when I came into this community, the first thing that struck me was how many incredible women there were that were supporting each other. Powerful women who had incredible, you know, six and seven figure businesses of their own outside of, of this collaborative thing that they were doing. And it really blew me away. And to be welcomed into the community, I got to see a different side of social selling. I got to see the the cheerleading part and the encouraging part and the, you know, the supportiveness, even the the supporting of people that you're not directly financially benefiting from, but this real collaborative um, energy and feeling of just wanting everyone to succeed. And so that's been something that's been really beautiful for me in my journey. And also, I think one of the things that allowed me to kind of let my guard down and start really feeling open to stepping into greater collaboration with women. This is Leah Steele, AKA The Wealth Witch, and this is my podcast. I'm here to activate you to remembrance of your divine birthright to be wealthy in all areas of your life. This podcast is for people ready to have controversial conversations about the financial control, manipulation, and tyranny that faces humanity today. I'm gonna live in freedom. Wealth Witch. It's for the people who are ready to wake up, deconstruct their wealth programming, and free themselves from the financial slavery consciousness that serves the global financial agenda. I'm committed to realizing a new global wealth paradigm where economic freedom is the reality and where you get to design and live the life of your dreams. Now let's do the damn thing. Hey, hey, and welcome to another episode of the Wealth Witch Podcast. I am your host, Leah Steele, and today I am so excited to be joined by three of my best friends, Soraya Garfield, Taryn Lee, and Sarah Blackaw. And we wanted to do a special episode where we talked to you about one of our favorite topics, which is collaboration um, and how important it is to not be competing with other women, to be collaborating um, so we were all together doing a some planning for a retreat and went on a spiritual journey together. And so we decided to record this podcast. I hope you love it. Um, I think it turned out really interesting. Um, it's a little bit funny. It's a little bit chaotic, but we hope you'll like it. Okay, let's roll. So we're excited today because there's four of us here in the room with a tiny little microphone, a big conversation on our hands, and we've just been actually coordinating or collaborating on a retreat. And so we wanted to do a collaborative podcast about collaboration. Crazy. (laughs) That's a lot of C's. (laughs) (laughs) So that was Sarah. And this is Leah. And so we decided also that we were going to release this episode on both of our podcasts. So if you're listening right now, you're either listening on the Wealth Witch podcast or you're listening on the Sirens of Joy podcast. But if you aren't already following the other one, you're definitely going to want to go do that now. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, just make sure you push that little plus sign in the upper right hand corner of your web browser or your phone. So that's my little promo piece at the beginning of this. Um, But yeah, so I'm super excited to be here uh, in this room. And I wish actually you could kind of see us because it's quite funny. We, I just brought my lapel mic for, to record my podcast. And so we don't have a big mic because we're actually on a little bit of a mini holiday up in Abood. And so we're all crowded around each other. Uh, in these chairs talking into this tiny little lapel mic. So <laughs> the visual, now you've got the visual of what's actually happening in this in this scenario and situation. But I'm super excited because three of my favorite women in the whole world are here. We've got to spend some really incredible days together. Um, we went and did a really incredible spiritual journey together. Um, and now, like Sarah said, we have been planning out our 2022 um, that's going to include some really, really next level and incredible retreats all around the world. We're going to Mexico. We're going to Ibiza. We're going to London. We're going to be here in Bali doing a retreat. I don't know what all I'm missing, but we, we're, we'll be in Dubai. So we just... um 
this is something that we love so, so much. And, you know, for me, one of the things that I really realized in this last year of, you know, many of my friends being off of the island was that I really missed the collaboration. I missed working together and I really wanted that to be one of my highest values, goals and objectives in 2022. So it's been a really great last 24 hours because we've been planning that and we're super excited about everything that we're rolling out. But we thought it would be really great to do a podcast and talk about collaboration and talk about why we do it and how we do it. And also like the craziness and the messiness of it sometimes, (laughs) because it's not always the easiest thing to do. I was actually going to pass it over to Taryn because I thought I'm going to put you on the spot here, Taryn, but I thought you'd be a great one to speak into why the whole do it alone thing is kind of old paradigm and been done. Because I know your self-confessed used to be a little bit of a lone wolf and especially in the last couple of years, as you've really stepped into your leadership and community building, everything has taken off for you in huge ways, financially, impact-wise, and it's really been about building teams and bringing people together in collaboration. So I'd love to hear why does doing it alone suck balls, and I'm going to say that word. (laughs) Donkey balls? (laughs) Giant, hairy donkey balls. Donkey balls and... Why are we seeing this huge shift to collaboration? Thanks, Sarah. Um, Yeah, I mean, I definitely am a self-confessed ex-lone wolf, although I still occasionally have lone wolf tendencies. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think I used to think that I could do it all myself and that it was just easier. And I, you know, in my own world, it just felt like it was easier to do it alone. But actually, the more I was coming together with people, the more I was creating community, the more you realize it's actually easier to collaborate. It's easier because one, the load is shared. But more importantly, the fun factor is in height, you know, is really heightened. You know, it's so much more fun when we're when we're doing it here. You know, I could be sitting here just working out this retreat stuff all by myself. And but it's just nowhere near as fun when we're all sitting around huddled in a room because it's boiling hot outside in Ubud, and we're in one room that's got the aircon cranked on so high that Soraya <laughs> sitting next to me looks like a woolly goat. So <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do I do believe that this is the the new way to create. I think it's the new way to create because I I do believe that really stepping into and owning each of your own geniuses and putting that all into one big pot is where we really get the magic. I think there was like, especially in the 80s and 90s, there used to be kind of this like, work on your flaws, you know, what you're not good at. You got to really work in that space. Whereas I I believe now it's much more of what is your genius? What is your jam? Let's take that to the highest possibilities. If you're not so good at things, like I'm not super good at detail. So if you're not so good at that, then you either outsource it or find somewhere to collaborate on it. And then we just, you know, we we expand so much more when we're able to put all that magic together. So I think there was definitely how we used to do it. I think we used to do it in tribes. I think we used to do it by coming together and collaborating and building a village together. And then I think, you know, especially society separated us, even in the way that we lived, we all got separated. Um, But I believe that we, you know, to really create this new paradigm, it's about coming back together. And it is about finding... It's finding the win, win, win for everybody when you're, when you're building that collaboration too. And so that's always like chunk up as high as you can. How do we all ultimately win? And then everyone finds their peace in it and how they win too. So why, why it sucks hairy balls? Is that what it is? To go along. Yeah, because, but it sucks, you know, and you get stuck on stuff. You know, like even today, I was a bit stuck on some things with our online retreat and Leah just steps in and she's like, this, 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 and this. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I would have maybe like marinated over the one stickiness of it for a long time, but she could see the way really quickly. And then all of a sudden, bang, we're moving forward much, much quicker. Mm. So it's much more fun. And I think you get more stuff done. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. It's not bad for a woman who thought she had nothing to say five minutes ago. <laughs> 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 and Soraya, like, do you want to know? I was going to hand it over if you wanted to jump in and speak about like how coming together with other women has actually like activated you into. Yeah. Um, 
So I'm Soraya. Hello, everyone. <laughs> AKA the go with the frozen feet and hands still. Uh, I think that I activating. Like you need to tell them why the go. Like, it's kind of confusing. It's a big, fluffy, white, furry, hooded jacket. And it's actually made to be on the beach. So it's a towel. Oh. This really is like, look at the brand as beach something. Right. Yeah. So it is made for the ocean. A lot of places. I know. <laughs> And I came from Utah, where I was freezing, so brought it over here. But yes, uh, collaborating with women, one of the nice things I find about it is a lot of women, a lot of people, not just women in general, are afraid to begin or execute their ideas because they're afraid of failure. And I feel like when you're collaborating with women or with anyone, you actually, there's going to be someone in the group that has actually made that mistake can give you advice, can help you excel, and you're not feeling that much, you know, like, oh, I'm failing by myself, or I, I'm not alone doing this. So that's very powerful for me, because that's one of my big things that, you know, I don't begin something because it's like, oh my gosh, what if I fail? What if I fell on my face? What if I look stupid? So I think that's very important. But to piggyback on Taryn, I also think I love it when we can come together as a group and it starts out just this small, small idea. And at the end of the day, we have this like huge monstrous, wow, I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about this. So it's super fun how everything just snowballs from one small thing. Um, that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, that's beautiful. And that just actually made me think of a conversation I had uh, ages ago, earlier on in my entrepreneurial journey, when I remember someone saying, a mentor, I think it's like you leave the corporate workspace, right? And a lot of people now are, are making that shift, have made that shift, continue to want to make that shift. But in a work environment, you are learning from your environment. You're learning skills. You're seeing how people do things. You're getting different perspectives. You're getting challenged on your ideas. And it's a, it's a lot of growth and a lot of actual human connection. But also, as humans, I still think we need validation. Like, is my work good? Like, how do I? And when you've got you, you make that shift to a sole, sole entrepreneur or start your own business, you don't have, unless you're investing 20, 30, like you could, you know, I still think mentors are incredible, but when you don't have much reference, you don't have much to bounce, feedback uh, yeah, feedback or things to bounce up against. And you can get very in your head and very isolated and very lonely. And I hear this a lot from uh, entrepreneurs. And so when you come together in collaboration, it's kind of like we're recreating a work environment to some degree where you've got different skill sets, expertise, geniuses, feedback, laughter, human connection. So I feel like it's vital because so many people I speak to on that journey at some point have had all those you know, then the self-doubt kicks in and we overanalyze and then we think we can't do it. So I think there's this huge movement away from nine to fives and corporates and freedom. And there's also a lot of challenges to that journey. And I think collaboration, really synergistic collaboration with like-minded people solves a lot of those problems. Mm -hmm. That got serious for a moment. <laughs> It's not, it's not so serious, but I have a Capricorn. <laughs> so Leah here. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think for me, the collaboration came in after doing it myself and being the boss for so long and carrying everything um, and just really getting tired of holding and shouldering all of the responsibility. And I think for a while, it was really difficult for me because I, I did like sort of test the waters early on in the journey of the Wealth Witch, right? Where I would, I was doing some collaborations with some other people. And it was really difficult because I would feel like the balance was off where I would end up doing the majority of the work. And then I would end up feeling resentful because I didn't feel like the other person was really like carrying their load, but there weren't real clear expectations in the beginning about like who would be doing what. And so I had a couple failed collaboration attempts. And so I was a little bit gun shy to mm. really dive into the world of collaborating with women. And, you know, I mean, I think we all at some level have some sisterhood wounds that were, and I hate that term because it's like so spiritual and <laughs> woo woo, but you, there's like no other way really to describe it. Like we do have these, we have been programmed and conditioned to not trust each other. And so 
it's difficult, especially, you know, when you're a woman who's building her own business and has found some success to then trust that success in that business into the hands of other women, Mm -hmm. um, is, is something that's difficult. And it's definitely something that I found difficult. So one of the things I, for me, that was really beautiful was coming to the island and meeting Sarah and Taryn and seeing how well you two collaborated together in business. And then, you know, Taryn and I sort of having very similar ways of working and doing business. Um, it was the first time really I had felt like somebody was equally carrying the load or, or would or could equally carry the load. Mm. And then when the three of us came together, there was sort of this like, the three of us being Taryn, Sarah and I, like Sarah has very different skill sets than Taryn and I, but she's just this incredible like people person and and has the ability to really nurture relationships, which those of you that know me know I suck at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then you find the synergies, right? And then Soraya is so outgoing. And so when she comes into the picture, like she's constantly talking to people and, and brings this like really vibrant, bubbly energy. And she's not afraid to talk to anybody. And if you know me, that's another thing, you know, that I'm not good at. (laughs) Um, so it's just beautiful to come together, I think. And, and when you start to, you know, the thing that I've found is for me, I always have to have somebody that I know is willing when I'm collaborating, that I know is willing to work as hard as I am, because that's the piece where I end up feeling let down. So I think in collaboration, it's really important for you to identify what your needs are in the collaboration. Mm-hmm. And then, but Taryn and I have a lot of the same strengths. So we also have a lot of the same weaknesses. So when we look for people to collaborate, then we need people that can come in and fill the spaces where we're weak. So I think it's really important to identify what your needs are in collaboration and then what you need as a whole mm. and the pieces that you're missing. And then you go out and seek those people to come in and kind of fill those gaps. So that's my thoughts. <laughs> I guess human design would be quite a good space in that, right? I'm not an expert on human design at all, but I was throwing it to you because sometimes you are. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love understanding how I love working in teams and I feel like that's a big part of my purpose is working in teams and synergistic teams. And there's two things that I'd say there. One is very much you need people that have the same shared vision and can really honestly stand in that end vision. And it's so true for them and it fully lights them up. And I think that is probably the first step because when you have that, then all the right people come in and the, you know, the things get done. Like we always say, we have no idea half the time how it happens, but it just happens. And I believe that's because we're all visionaries and we know what the end result is and we all like do our natural piece. And hold the vision. And hold the vision and that ends up, it ends up happening. However it happens, it ends up happening. And within that, we all do quite a lot of work around knowing our strengths and weaknesses, knowing our human design, knowing how like, energetically we work and operate. So I think you need to know yourself pretty well in order to collaborate effectively because if you don't, and like Leah said, you don't know your needs, you don't know your strengths, then it can be just a bit of a pool of floppiness. (laughs) (laughs) That's when you, you know, have all these great ideas that, that nothing actually comes of. So I think knowing yourself first is pretty, pretty key. The other thing, and I might hand this one over to Taryn, is we we probably didn't share, but actually how we came together was through Healy. And we all met through um, a model, a business model that actually is very conducive to collaboration. And we're going on to do things outside of that, but that was a start point. Do you want to talk about, do you want to speak into that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I mean, that's one of the things I absolutely love about that business model is that it really is about collaborating. It really is about supporting. It really is about coming together. Uh, you can certainly do that journey as a lone wolf, and I have done that journey as a, as a lone wolf and and in previous companies. But you know, it is for all the reasons I explained before. Right? You know, it's so much more fun. It's so much more supportive. It's so much more rewarding when you really come together in community and. In that social sharing model, you know, we all came together with, from Healy. And if you're not sure what Healy is, it's a bioresonance uh, frequency device. It's incredible. But um, what's more incredible is the community that gets built around these kinds of things and the beautiful women that get built around it. And and from that, we're then able to spring out to other things. Like today, you know, you've heard us talking about, oh, we're speaking about these retreats. And this is something that we're building 
for that community, but also for broader communities as well to all, all take part in. And we would never, we would never even be in this room without that. You know, it's, it's ultimately because of, of that network of networks effect that happens inside of social, social selling that, you know, I have met obviously Leah and Soraya knew Sarah prior, but Leah and Soraya having met these two incredible women, they would not be in my life without that incredible model, nor would actually literally tens of thousands of other women that I've now been able to connect with because of that incredible literal networks of networks model that that is. And yeah, it's such an amazing way to expand your network, but it's it's such a great community building space as well. Um, I came from corporate and corporate can be very kind of dog eat dog because it's very much about, you know, who's climbing that ladder, who's getting the corporate, you know, corner office kind of thing. But in this model, it really is my success depends on everyone else's success. So we really are here all supporting each other or cheering each other on. And I really believe that, that, you know, sometimes this model gets a bad rap, but in the new paradigm, I think that this is how we're going to really move into that is through that constant collaboration is through that sharing through the, through the skill sharing through the community sharing i think that that is a completely new way that we will be doing business and building community around that business that's what's so beautiful about that kind of business model mm-hmm. yeah i want to just speak into that a little bit this is leah um because soraya and i are actually from salt lake city utah which is like one of the mlm yeah, yeah the mecca or one of the you know the MLM capital of the world, if you will, multi-level marketing or network marketing or social selling, kind of all these similar ideas. And I think that, you know, when Healy or the social selling model first came into my field of awareness, you know, once I had moved to Bali, my reaction, and I want to hear from Soraya on this too, because I know that that we have had similar experiences, was kind of like, uh, like not network marketing, right? Um, because we were raised in a city where everyone was constantly hawking you everything and it got really old. And so, you know, I originally aligned with Healy because the product was so aligned with like my values and, and what I did in business. And I had a massive personal, um, transformative story with the device, which we'll put some information in the show notes. Um, if you want to learn more about Healy, but it, you know, when I came into this community, the first thing that struck me was how many incredible women there were that were supporting each other. And they weren't just like these women that in my mind, I visioned as network marketing women. They were like powerful women who had incredibly incredible, you know, six and seven figure businesses of their own outside of, of this collaborative thing that they were doing in their social selling or in their network marketing. And it really blew me away. And to be welcomed into the community and then see how that and what Taryn just said, I got to see a different side of social selling. I got to see the the cheerleading part and the encouraging part and the, you know, the supportiveness, even through the lines. And this may be something that's unique to Healy or it may be because of Taryn's leadership, but even the the supporting of people that you're not directly financially benefiting from, but this real collaborative um, energy and feeling of just wanting everyone to succeed. And so that's been something that's been really beautiful for me in my journey. And also I think one of the things that allowed me to kind of let my guard down and start really feeling open to stepping into greater collaboration with women. So Soraya, I would love to hear from you on this because I know we were sort of raised in similar, well, we were raised in a similar city. And I know that you really embraced Healy and the social selling model. And so I'd love to just hear a little bit about your journey and and how that's going for you and how that came to be and whatever else you want to share. Well, and I've done lots of, hi, this is Soraya. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, this is Soraya. Um, Social networking. So when I did come here, it took me about a year to actually jump into it. And I thought I had a block of not being able to, you know, do the Healy and sell the program when actually it was just because of where we came from. And because so many people had in their head like, oh, my gosh, not another one, not another social networking. Uh, But being here and being surrounded, especially by this model of collaboration instead of competition is amazing because it's actually inspiring. 
you know, to be around these women and this energy, as we all know, it, it rubs off from person to person and to be around this energy, you know, I wasn't in, in inspired at the moment, but the more I'm around it, you know, I can go home and be like, wow, this was inspiring. And then all of a sudden I have an idea that goes to a different idea and it's not happening, happening instantly, but it is coming from this energy, you know, that's completely different from being back in Utah. So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> over to me. Well, on the spot, what do I have to say? I mean, going to take a moment because I'm not going to say something for the point of saying it. I mean, I have been out of what I'd call the system for probably 10 or 12 years now and I've tried so many things. Like I've really looked for so many different ways to build business, to create freedom, create income, create impact. Um, and this, this one for me just makes the most sense. Like it feels like the most natural extension of how we're supposed to operate as humans by caring about people, by um, like just being in connection with each other and sharing and, and supporting and helping each other. Like it, it feels like a natural extension of who we are and I think we get really well rewarded for that. Uh, it. And then leading into like the the retreats and things like what moves me the most is when like we have real connection. I think that's what people are craving. Like we have a lot of this online stuff at the moment, which I guess is needed because of what's happening in the world. But when you really bring people in a space together and that will move into the retreats, there's something that happens that, you can't replace that. And so many things have happened in the last two years that's pulled us into isolation. And so as we move into these retreats and events, both online and offline, I think it's that's when, like Sarai, back on what you were saying, that's when we get activated into our purpose. I think if you're just at home trying to figure out who you are and what you're doing, you don't you could spend your whole life there. <laughs> but when we come into community, when we come into connection with each other, it's like we wake each other up or we walk each other home or, you know, that saying that gets shared a lot, which I love. Like we're all walking each other home and it's through connection and community that that we remember who we are and what we're here to do. And I don't think you can you can find that without stepping in and getting a bit messy and bumping up against things <laughs> and, you know, learning through relationship of like how do I add value? How do I receive value? What do I need? Like all these kind of things. And I, yeah, I think it's, and that's why we're, I know we're inspired to do these events because it's the transmission, the in-person transmissions that you can't, you can't replicate. Yeah. Leah, back again. <laughs> I never say my name. Back I'm again. <laughs> the person that's not saying their name is Sarah, just <laughs> FYI. Naughty. <laughs> So um, I wanted to speak a little bit into competition because I think that there's still this dynamic is still so at play for women. Um, and, you know, and I, I find it so interesting because, Sarah, you and I are both coaches mm. um, and we're both, you know, have similar networks. We have a lot of crossover in our networks. I think we probably have a lot of crossover actually in our podcast listeners mm. um, if it came right down to it. But there's never been a feeling of like, oh, you, you know, if I refer somebody to you, then I'm not going to get the business or vice versa. And one of the things I think that is so important right now that we really begin to focus on is not that like me trying to protect my piece of the pie, mm. that when we actually come together, what happens is a greater pie gets built, like mm. a bigger pie. Mm. So we're sharing a bigger pie, which means our individual piece actually gets bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, and so whatever, you know, if you're listening to this, whatever industry you're in, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever your dreams are, um, you know, if you're just starting a business or if you're already in a business to kind of shift that mentality and that mindset from who am I competing with to who can I collaborate with? Mm. That's going to help me build a bigger pie. Mm. Um, I know that when I started really making that shift, my business actually started growing much more exponentially. 
So I was growing slowly in a slow trajectory. But when I started realizing, you know, and, and in the last two years, really started stepping into these collaborations, when you collaborate with somebody else, your network becomes their network. Mm -hmm. And so you grow bigger. And if you, if you approach it from a perspective of there's always enough of everything to go around, Mm -hmm. um, especially like if we just talk monetarily, like money, right? Mm -hmm. So I could say, oh, I don't want to refer somebody to this program of Sarah's because if they spend their $3,000 with Sarah, then they're not going to spend $3,000 with me. Mm -hmm. But money is just energy and energy is unlimited. And when we start to step into those mindsets, and if you're listening to the Wealth Witch podcast, obviously we talk about this a lot. Um, And I know, Sarah, you talk about energy and vibration and frequency a lot on Sirens of Joy podcast. But if we look at money as energy and energy being unlimited, then there isn't a finite supply of those things. Mm. And when we help people expand in their um, abilities or skills or give them more tools or give them more um, insight into how they can make money or how they can expand their reality, then they have more disposable income. Right. So, you know, and I don't, I don't work on leadership. I, I don't, I don't work in the feminine leadership mm-hmm. arena and you don't work in, and Sarah doesn't work in the wealth consciousness space. And so if I can send the people that have been working with me in the wealth consciousness space over to Sarah to learn about feminine leadership and intuition, then now they've got more skills and now they've got more tools and Sarah can send her people to me to help expand their wealth consciousness, to make more money, to spend money on Taryn's retreat (laughs) (laughs) or whatever the case may be, but you get the picture. I think that it's just important that we really start to shift out of this idea of um, there only being a finite amount of resources and that people are limited in their ability to, um, participate in things. Mm-hmm. And so I think that when, when, for me, I just, at some point got to the point where I just don't even think about that anymore. Mm-hmm. Like it's not even in my field of awareness. So I just want to be like, who can I collaborate with that can add value to my community? When I look at it from a place of I've got an incredible community and I want to give them as many skills and tools and information and wisdom and knowledge as I can. Mm -hmm. And I know that my scope of what I teach is in the arena of what I teach. And so going out and collaborating with other women, then I bring them in their expertise. My community gets to know, then they go become part of that woman's network and that woman's network becomes part of my network. And we're just growing a bigger, Mm. delicious cherry pie. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to add to that because you got me all the kinds of things were popping as you were speaking. And my name's Sarah. Um, (laughs) And I'm going to drop a quote. I've been dropping quotes like it's hot the last two days, (laughs) but I think you're going to like this one. There's no competition when you listen to your soul. Mm. You know, like when you're following your path and your alignment and what you're here to do, there's no competition for that. It's your unique expression and you trust that the exact people are going to find you when they need you. So that backing on the competition thing. The other thing, and just from like purely a result, because I know, I know sometimes people can think collaboration feels a bit like, you know, a bit, what's the word I'm looking for? airy fairy or like it's like how does it actually tangibly work but when we all came together and we're running events together and and collaborating in our business literally all of us had our biggest financial month ever and I do think that goes back to vibration we're in the vibration of joy it was so much fun we're making these beautiful experiences and we and money was coming, but it's also the feminine is non-linear. So it's not this like, oh, I'm going to sell one coaching program to you and receive this much money. Like, and that feminine energy and being in that vibration, you know, we were just giving as we felt inspired to give and money was coming and we weren't tracking it or looking at numbers. It's just there's this beautiful giving and receiving and, and exchange that's happening and, yeah, I just want to speak to that because we we had very tangible evidence of that when we we're like, and then you know we kind of split up for different reasons and went and did our own thing, and then we we're all like, oh, it was way more fun, and we were making way more money when we were working together. So let's do that, <laughs> and that lies in with the joy aspect, I guess, and signs of joy, like being in that frequency, to where you make the most money too. Mm. One last thing that could be good 
I mean, I don't know if we can talk about the platform yet, but opportunities yeah, to to bring these tangible ways to collaborate together. Absolutely. A couple of things that I Taren. had had my name's Taryn. <laughs> 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 Taryn Lee. I won't give you my full name because it's far too long. Um, a couple of things I was thinking about is, number one, obviously, it's not just having the abundance mindset. Obviously, that's really incredible. But when you interlap different networks, your ripple where you might have originally thought, I don't want to send them to Seraph because I'm missing out on the 3000 then the, that her ripple might have found someone who brought you 30,000, you know, so there's, there's that. And then the other thing on collaboration being soft or, or woo woo, the biggest companies in the world do JVs all the time, mm-hmm. joint ventures. That's how they create massive projects with billions of dollars mm-hmm. from collaboration, from JVs. Mm-hmm. So I guess for the logical thinkers out there or the more business minded ones, yeah. if there's any that listen to these. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a badass on our podcast. <laughs> it just makes sense from business. You know, it makes sense energetically. It makes sense from a joy perspective. It makes sense from a community perspective. And it makes sense from a corporation uh, perspective as well and strategy perspective. So I think that all round, you know, again, it's finding that win, win, win. That's the only piece I think that you have to be very mindful of when you are creating any collaboration and which anyone will do, even in a JV, right? They are finding the win, win between each company. What wins for me? What wins for you? And what wins overall? And I guess that's bringing to the platform. I mean, that was one of the things. My whole life is just all these incredible coaches and podcasters and network marketers and affiliates and, and, and thought leaders. This is who my whole world is, uh, you know, surrounding. And I wanted to create something in which everyone could collaborate on and everyone could win from. And so I've been creating this, uh, platform called kinship which is kinship because it's obviously all commu- oh, you know humans all coming together where everyone has the opportunity to share their geniuses and share their gifts to the world and it's not it's not a competition space it's a very collaborative space it's a very social space it's a space of you know constant support from all different networks it's a network of network effects that happens on this space as well but yeah, it was, it was designed with this. How do I really create this win, win, win for the coaches, for the network marketers, or for the people that aren't in either of those spaces, but just like to be part of a community and find ways of also earning within that community as well? Because obviously there's a, there's incredible earning capacity that you have as well when you bring all of that ec- epicness into one platform for people to, to share in. So that's a plug for that. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll put some information in the show notes um, about where you can learn more about the Kinship platform as well. Um, and uh, definitely some information about Healy in there. So yeah, so we just thought it would be fun to kind of, while we were all here together, um, record this podcast and and let you know a little bit about how we work together. Felt like it would be valuable to share some of our um, thoughts, feelings, insights on why we feel like it's important. And, you know, so I think that what we've touched on is um, it's more fun. Uh, it's more financially lucrative. <laughs> it is, it's easier in, in, in many ways to share the workload. Um, and, and just that I feel like really this is where humanity is actually headed is, is back into places of, uh, collective collaboration just in general. Um, and certainly I feel like women are moving more in that direction now and out of this kind of separation that we've been in for, you know, the last however many generations. So, um, yeah, we're just super, you know, happy and excited to be able to come in and share our thoughts and feelings with you. And, um, so we hope that you found a lot of value in this, Um, and so definitely, yeah, check out the show notes and descriptions for some of the things that we were discussing. And if you're listening to this podcast and it is the week that the 22nd and 23rd of January is happening, we have an incredible, incredible free online experience happening. Um, it's called the luminous expansion retreat and there are going to be how many, uh, guest speakers, Taryn? 
Oh gosh, now we've got about 25. So we have about 25 incredible, primarily female, but incredible speakers coming to talk about subjects ranging from wealth consciousness to attracting soulmate client to uh, frequencies to building on social media to working with your cycles, all kinds of things. So it's going to be a really, really incredible opportunity to come and join us. We are going to put a link in the show notes. It's completely free. Um, you register, come show up. We will make it on demand for 48 hours. So in case you miss some of the sessions, um, you'll be able to come back and watch them on the replay. We are um, beginning them at 7 a.m. Bali time. Um, and then we will start a second session at 7 p.m. Bali time. So hopefully... If you're wherever you are in the world, you'll be able to catch some of it live. Um, and what you can't catch live, you can certainly uh, watch on demand for 48 hours. So we will put the link to that in the show notes. Uh, we would love, love, love for you to come and join us. This is our first luminous event that will be happening this year. Um, and as we mentioned in the episode, we will be doing retreats in Mexico, in Ibiza, in Bali. And then we will be having some uh, one day events, more VIP day style events in London and Dubai um, and some other places around the world. And I think we'll probably make it to the United States at some point this year <laughs> as well. So stay tuned for that information. We're so happy that you came um, and spent some time with us and we'll see you next time. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to connect with me on social media and reach out. I love hearing from you. And if you want more of me, real, raw, and uncensored, make sure to join the Wealth Witch Telegram channel. It's my free channel where I share all of my random daily musings, as well as the information that I feel like is important and pertinent to my community. We've put a link to the Telegram channel in the show notes. So make sure to come join us over there if that intrigues you. Remember, wealth is a mindset and you are the most powerful creator in your reality. Until next time, this is the Wealth Witch signing off. Freedom.